All right, today is Thursday the 21st. Do not forget these assignments here are the assignments that are due, the warm-up, the homework, the area practice sheet that I gave you on yesterday, that's due, the distance worksheet that we, uh, that we did on Tuesday. Don't forget about those things. And then we have a short quiz on distance on tomorrow. Today, we're going to work on volume of a cylinder. We're going to do the warm-up first. I'm doing volume of a cylinder today. We're going to do some guided and, bless you, some guided and independent practice. Bless you, babe. Okay. Uh, we have Thursday homework. Please make sure that you uh, review your notes or study your notes on distance. Distance on the coordinate plane and um, Pythagorean theorem. What's that by? Distance. Okay. Yes. And then this is Pythagorean. I'm going to abbreviate Pythagorean. No, for, for number three. Number three. This is got, got it. it. Yeah. Thank you. Got it and independent. Okay, and I'll pause to give you a chance to write. Let's take out our planner. Anybody need a sheet from the planner? Here, babe. Oops, wrong side. There we go. Anybody else? You need one? Come. You need one? Please make sure you keep up with it because, again, it's a project grade. We're writing in our planner. This is week three. We already titled it. Okay, um, so today is Thursday. So we got Math 8. And we are, we have homework. I'm not doing a homework help video today. We have our uh, quiz tomorrow, so you need to study. The quiz is on distance and Pythagorean theorem. So write distance and Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to abbreviate Pythagorean theorem. Okay? And I'll pause to give you a chance to write. All right, let's keep going. All right, so warm up. Oh, I got Monday. Oh, wait, Tuesday. We did, we did Monday together, and then in the video, I did Tuesday and Wednesday. So we're on Thursday. Should they have Monday family? Yeah, I did it with them. Yeah, we did it together. No, you're talking about, she's talking about something different. We did Tuesday homework, Miss Moore. It's not, it's Miss Moore. It's no such thing as um a, a Monday homework. It's not, it's not a Monday homework in here. But I was talking about. That's okay. I do. So I'm just kind of through the day. That's okay, baby cheeks. But the uh, warm up, I did these warm ups with you already. These should already be done. Okay, I'm doing Thursday now. All right. It says find the area. Find the area of a triangle. Remember the formula for area of a triangle. I'm gonna write it up here so I can have space. Is one half base times the height. Okay. So the height is 10. This is how tall it is. This is the height. The base, we don't know yet. So we got to find the base. What can we use to find this length right here? Pythagorean theorem. Somebody said it. Good. Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm going to label my sides A, B, and C. Yes. She's back. Okay, so now we're going to label the sides A, B, and C. So this side 
this is your these are your legs because they form the right angles so this is your a and b it's already labeled b and the side opposite of the right angle is c any questions about how to label so now we're going to substitute why are we doing pythagorean theorem because this length is missing and we need that for the area formula we need to know what this length is the base so now we're going to substitute a is 10 so we're going to put 10 in the place of a so b we don't know so we're just going to leave it as b squared and c is 20. okay so now use her calculator. so now we're going to simplify what's 10 times 10 or 10 squared this is 100 plus b squared is equal to what's 20 times 20 400 you're adding you said you're added so we got 400 20 times 20 is 400 so to get b by itself how do i get b by itself what do i gotta move mm -mm, not yet that's the last step what do i have to do first to get b by itself subtract the 100 and when i subtract the 100 that gives me b squared on this side is equal to what's 400 minus 100 that's 300. Now, Stoney, what do I do? Uh, square. I square root. So now let's type in the square root of 300. How do I type in second plus 712? Clear my calculator. How do I type in the square root of 300? Um, How do, I press the second button and what? S3. X to the second. Very good. Second, X squared. Type in 300. And we're going to round to the nearest tenths place. So this is 17.3 or about, because we round it, 17.3. So my base is going to be 17.3 and my height is 10. So this is one half times 17.3 times 10. So let's type that in. One half or 0. 0.5 times 17.3 times 10. You type it in and see what you get. I'll pause for the calls. 86.5. Good job. And then it's, uh, well, they don't put measurements. They didn't say inches or anything, so just leave it at 86.5. I'm going to pause to give you a chance to write the squiggly lines here is about. All right, so let's look. Let's do the next one, okay? Alan needs to clean his gutters. He leans his 20-foot ladder. So the ladder is 20 foot, 20 feet, okay? That's how long the, the ladder is against the house um, with a base. So the bottom part of the ladder is 7 feet away from the house. So we're going to draw that picture. This is the house, and the ladder is leaning up against the house. Okay? So the measurements that we know, we know that the ladder is 25 feet. It's right here. And then the base, so this bottom part, is 7 feet away from the house. So this length right here, is seven feet away from the house. So they want to know how high is the gutters. So they want to know this distance right here. How tall is this? What can you use to find this distance right here? What shape are we making from this picture? A right triangle. So what can we use to find the missing length of a right triangle? Yes. Pythagorean theorem. So let's write that out to the side and slide this over a little bit. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's label the sides. All right. So this would be the right angle here. And I know this is the right angle because buildings, when you build a building, it is perpendicular to the ground. It's straight up and down. Okay. So this is my right angle. Because this is my right angle, the side opposite of it, the slanted side is the c. 
and then this is my A and B, okay? So this is, I'm going to label this as A, and this bottom is going to be B. So now let's substitute. I need to know what A is. So I'll leave it as A squared. I have the answer. Very good. 7 squared. Shh, y'all please stop hating. And 25 squared. Shh, I know. He always says it. All right, so we got A squared plus, what's 7 squared? 49. And what's 25 squared? 625, okay? Good job. So now, what do we do to get A by itself? Very good. Subtract 49 from both sides. When I subtract this, this is gone, and I'm left with the A squared. Bring down the equal. And let's type this in. 625. 625 minus 49. And what does that give you? 576. Now what do we do to get rid of the squared? What's the opposite of squaring a number? So we're going to square root to get A by itself. The square root of A squared is just A. So now how do we find the square root of 576? Very good. Second, X squared button. And we type in 576. What is that equal to? Very good. It is 24. Okay. So the distance from the ground to the gutters is going to be 24 feet. Any questions? Okay. I'm going to pause for the calls. Okay, good people. Uh, put this sheet in front of you, and you have a pair of scissors. We just passed those out. And you're going to cut this dotted line. Please take that piece of paper and push it to the side so that we can collect it. I don't want to see the slips of paper on the floor, okay? So cut the dotted line, please. Cut the dotted line. Cut this dotted line. All right, I'll pause to give you a chance to cut. Okay, so turn this over, and you're going to fold these in, just like this. I don't know. Well, I just missed this. It, it, it was like he's only missed like a couple days, though. Uh, let me make, make this a little bit better. <laughs> you just folded it in. Yeah. That's okay. It's all right. But you didn't dip to it, though, so thank you for not doing that, sir. Just fold them in. And the first one we're going to uh, do is circle. Okay? I'm going to pause to give you a chance. Okay. So the first one we're going to do is circle. So we're going to lift this open and turn it the right way so we can see it, okay? All right. The reason why we're doing circle first, even though we're doing volume of all of these shapes, we're doing volume of a cone, volume of a cylinder, or we're doing cylinder first, then cone, then sphere, okay? Um, all of these have a circular base, okay? Or they are circular in general. Like the sphere doesn't have a base, but it's a circular object. Okay, the cone has a circular base. It only has one base, but that one base is circular. And the cylinder has two bases, and they're both circles. Okay, so that's why we're doing area of a circle first, because each of these are circular. So area of the circle, um, find the area of this circle. We're going to use the rounded number 3 and 14 hundredths for pi. And we're going to round our answer to the nearest tenth. The formula for area of a circle is A, which represents area, is equal to pi r squared. The r represents the radius of the circle. So if they give you the diameter, you cut that number in half to get the radius. 
but this problem actually gave you the radius. All right, so let's substitute the values to figure out what the area is. So we find an A, so bring down the A. What is the number they want you to use for pi? 3.14 or 3 and 14 hundredths. That's a rounded answer. Times, what's the radius? Mm -mm. What's the radius? Five. This is the radius in the picture. So this is five squared. All right. So now we're going to type this in our calculator to see what the area is going to be. And this is inches, okay? All right, so let's type this in. We have three and 14 hundredths. Type it in, please. Times five, and we're squaring five. Five squared. Very good. Okay, so when we press enter there, that gives us 78.5. So area is about, sorry, about 78 and 5 tenths inches to what power? The second power because it's two-dimensional, okay? Inches times inches, I'm going to put this in parentheses, inches times inches is inches to the second power. This is my answer for area. This is the formula for area of a circle, pi r squared. Any questions about that? All right, here we go. Now let's do cylinder. Cylinder has two bases, okay? It has two bases. The bases are circles. So the formula for finding the volume, how much space can I fit in this three-dimensional shape, is to first find the area. When you fill this up with water, the first thing that has to be covered is the floor, the bottom part, okay? After the floor is covered, the more water you put in, then the height starts to increase, okay? So the formula for volume of a cylinder is always going to be the area of the circle first. That's pi r squared. This is the area of the circle. That has to be covered first. And then what happens? When you continue to put water in it, what increases? This what? Hello? What is this? What is this of the cylinder? Height. Somebody say, say again. Height. height. The height increases. So this is the formula. You find the area of the circle first and then however tall the cylinder is. So area of a circle times the height. That's how you know how much space is in here because the area has to be covered first and then how tall is it? How tall is that cylinder? Any questions about the formula? Area of a circle times how tall it is. That works for every cylinder. Area of the circle times the height. Area of the circle times the height. You okay? Okay. So now let's find... Let's find the volume of this cylinder and round it to the nearest tenth. That's one space behind the decimal. We got V is equal to, what are we using for a pi? 3.14 or 3 and 14 hundredths times, what's the radius in that cylinder? Five inches. And we're squaring it times what's the height of that cylinder times 12 inches okay all right so let's type this in our calculator let's type it in our calculator so in our calculator we have three and fourteen hundredths times five squared. Don't forget to square it. Five times five times 12. And what does that give you? Okay. Very good. 942. So we got, how'd you type it in? Did you type it in wrong, baby? Yeah. Do you know how to type it in correctly? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So this is going to be, say again, I'm sorry. 
It's uh times 12, baby. Times. This is going to be inches to what power? Mm -mm, that's area. Volume is to the third power. It's how many cubic units can fit in that solid. So it's to the third power. And I should have said that first. Sorry. Okay. Any questions? All right. Anybody still writing? Avery, are you sure you're okay, babe? Yeah. All right, good deal. Cone. Cone has one base, okay, and it comes to a point, all right? So let me share this with you. Which one you think holds more uh, water? Which one you think is going to hold more, the cylinder or the cone? Cylinder is going to hold more than the cone will. How much more do you think the cylinder is going to hold than the cone? How much more? Like how many cones do you think it would take for me to fill up the cylinder? Like if I took water and notice they're the same height. If I took water and poured it in, how many times do you think you'd have to pour it to fill it in? Okay, let's take some guesses. Somebody said four. Raise your hand for four. You think it'd take four times to fill it up. Okay, two people. What was the other guess somebody said? Two. Somebody said two. Raise your hand if you think it's going to take two times to fill this up okay one two three people any other four people any other guesses because the rest of you didn't raise your hand on anything raise your hand if you don't have an idea you don't have no idea okay at least you're honest okay at least i know you're listening all right so here let's uh it's actually going to take three of these okay it is a third of it Okay, this is going to take three of these to fill in this. So a, a cylinder is three times as big as a cone, which means that a cone is one third of a cylinder. Okay, so that, so because it takes three of these to fill up this, the formula is going to be V is equal to, it's going to be a third. So one third of the volume for a cylinder. The volume for the cylinder again is pi r squared times the height it's the same formula the only thing's different is that you have to multiply it times three or divide it by three because this is three times as big as that so you take the area of i'm sorry the volume of a cylinder and divide it by three okay that's how you find the volume or how much space it is in a cone any questions so technically, we can take this number and divide it by three, and that would give us our answer for this, okay? So, but we're going to go ahead and fill it in. We got one third, or take it and divide it by three, same thing, times, what are we plugging in for pi? 3.14, or three and 14 hundredths, times, what's the radius again? five five inches that's okay and we're squaring that times what's the height 12. okay all right so now let's type this in okay let's type this in so we have one third we can put one third in parentheses parentheses one divided by three Close the parentheses. That's how you type a fraction in the calculator. Then we got times 3 and 14 hundredths times 5 squared. Very good. Times what? 12. And again, what does that equal? Very good. 314. And again, we could, and this is inches to what power? It's volume, so it's inches to the what power? Third power. Good. You all are catching on. That's good. So that was the same as saying this number right here, that cylinder, 942 divided by the three. You see it? It's a third of it. Any questions? Okay. 
So these formulas are very similar. Okay, the only thing that's different is that this is one third. That'll kind of help you remember the formula. The last one is the sphere. Is anybody still copying that? I'm sorry. I'll pause. Let me pause. All right. So look at this one. A. I hear you, Deja. All right. This is a sphere. It's okay. Volume. This one is one you just don't have to remember. This is not an easy one to remember. It's four over three, the fraction four over three. I know. Pi r to the third power. You just have to remember that. I don't know of an easy way to remember that, but it's four over three. Pi r to the third power. So you have to maybe, if you come up with something easy to remember or how you remember it, share it with people, okay? Because this is one you just don't have to remember. All right, what is it that we plug in for pi again? Very good. Okay. What's the radius of this sphere? Five. Very good, baby. So we got five inches, and we're going to do that to the third power. Okay. Now we're going to type it in, sit up. Remember I told you, if you know what I said. Okay. I don't have to keep saying it over again. All right. Let's type this in, okay? I need y'all to do this. Don't wait for me to do it. The fraction, we put it in parentheses. So look at Miss Reyes. It's parentheses right here. Four divided by three. That's how you type in the fraction, four over three. Please type that in so you'll know how to do it. Now we got times, good job, times three and fourteen hundredths. Then we got times five, but this time we're going to raise it to the third power, okay? So that's this carrot key right here. Do you see this key right here? That's the carrot key right here. And then three. That's how you type into the third power. Carrot key, and I don't know why they call it a carrot key. They just do, okay? Uh, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. That's maybe that's why I don't know. I never thought about it. And press enter. Enter. Mm -hmm. oh All right. So this is about. They said round it to the nearest tenths place. So one space behind the decimal. So that's going to be five hundred twenty-three point three repeating. Don't forget the repeated symbol because the three goes on. Okay. Thank you, Miss Moore. All right. Any questions? Y'all okay? All right. Okay. We're going to paste this in our notebooks. This is page what, y'all? Y'all remember? This is page. This is page 15. Wait a minute. Yesterday was page 15, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is page 15, right? 15. Yes, we're talking about that later. All right, here we go. Oh, well, whatever. This is page 15. Oh, it is. Thank you. This is volume foldable. Yes, ma'am. That was what we did yesterday in the video. I told y'all to watch that video. It's, well, it's page 14. Please make sure you go back and watch it, okay? If you didn't. The page number. Okay, good. Good, good. All right, so volume, I'm going to write the form, the definition for volume before I put, paste this page 
paste the, um, this down. The definition is the number of cubic units. That's why it's to the third power. In a three dimensional um, shape. I'm going to say shape instead of solid. Or object. Okay. And then you're going to just glue this down like this. I'm going to put the circle at the top. So just glue this down. Any questions? All right, I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to leave this up here so you can copy it. But I'm going to stop the video. I want you to make sure you put your scissors. Please go ahead now. Don't forget, put the scissors in the little pocket, the pencil pouch that's beside your desk. Do that now so you don't forget so it's not on the floor. Put the glue sticks back in there as well. And then put your calculator up, okay?